Hello and welcome to another Spark AR tutorial video. Version 78 has just landed and it brings with it a plethora of new features, namely a huge upgrade to the AR library. So I've just set up a simple scene here with a rectangle and a material which is going to be taking in our camera texture data. And if I go to add asset and import from AR library, we're now greeted with this new screen. So whereas before we only had the options for Sketchfab 3D objects and audio which was in the, an earlier build and then disappeared and then returned, we now have two extra options which is script packages. So these are some uh, JavaScript libraries, uh, scripts that you can already import straight away. And some patch assets. So what we're going to be looking at uh, in this video it, to begin with is just some of the new shaders. And we'll have a look at what they do. So we'll go through this in order and obviously this library will be updated and improved over time. So if we import the checkerboard pattern just for now and bring that in here. And we output that to our material. So you can see how we've got our checkerboard pattern applied there. We could increase the number of boxes with our X and Y. And we could also import anything into these values here. So we could start adding in, let's say, a transitional value with a loop. Let's try this out just to get something going. And import this to our rotation value, change our transition to a number. So we could add in some motion or, for example, so you can see how we could import things into this uh, patch. You can always expand these patches so you can see how that patch was built up. As you can sort of see, doing all that from memory or from the top of your head could be quite a struggle. So that is the checkerboard. Oh, just uh, get rid of that one. Uh, the next one we're going to look at is the dots. So again, this is going to be very similar to the way that the checkerboard one is, except this time we'll have dots instead. So let's just import this and bring this into here and hook this up as well. So likewise we can have a repeated set of dots so we could adjust the scale of our dots so we can make them larger or smaller. Maybe too small that is, let's go at one. And then we could always increase the number of repetitions. And make it harsher. So again, any value that has an input we can adjust. And I'm just sort of going through these in some speed just because there's a lot to go through. Uh, grid is the same. Uh, ripple. Uh, let's have a look at the ripple one. I don't think this one's going to be much different. Let's uh, bring it in and have a look. Hook this up. So likewise, we have a sort of animational value here. So let's say we want to adjust the scale for example we can have this animation playing where we have a sort of weird hypnosis so again you could imagine we could take in uh, other values and use this as a kind of um, diffuse map almost uh, we've also got some look values so I'm not going to go through the gradient ones too much because these ones have been covered before and they are quite uh, self-explanatory, same with duotone and tritones. Uh, we're going to look at some of the more interesting ones though, so let's have a look at the adjust colors one and see what, how that, uh, what that one does. So we can bring in this, we can bring in our texture from our camera, like so, and now I could adjust my brightness so I could always make it brighter or darker adjust its hue and you can always invert the colors so you can sort of see again we can adjust our color values with that and again I'm going through this in fairly fast speed uh, pixelate which is actually a super cool one to have in there now and again there were pixelate shaders uh, generated within the community before but now having it easily accessible within the actual program itself does make a huge difference. So I could always increase the number of pixels or 
reduce the number of pixels to have it normal. And then again, this could be linked to a value. So we could have this going from, let's say, 30 to 400. So we can have this pixelate effect. And again, this could be linked to an animation that you uh, bring in and uh, adjusting its values from that. I have a clone. So I have played with this one earlier. And this one was a bit uh, trippy, to say the least. So again, we can import this into here, import our RGB texture. So you can see how it's sort of duplicating the uh, texture. So this is duplicating it around six times. We could always adjust its speed. So if we go a lot more erratic, I can adjust its uh, zoom. And obviously it's offset value as well. If I adjust its speed to let's say 0 0.01. So now you can see we've got this sort of cloning happening and it's going to move back to its previous position but takes some time. So that is the clone shader. And again we've got a transform one and again these is a patch that has been around before but now it's nice to actually be able to easily access it within the program. So we could simply bring in our tessellations so you can see how we could again transform that value and let's just try the last one within the shaders property and again like I said there'll probably be more of these added the color value ones I'm not going to go through because again You've probably seen those before, and they are again very self explanatory. So, with this one, we should be able to bring in a distortion texture. So, let's see if I've got an image on my machine that I could use for that. Have I got something I could use? Let's try this orange um, slice and see what that does. There we go. So it's using the uh, orange PNG image and it's basically creating this sort of cutout distortion effect. So we're getting this sort of like almost frosted glass look almost. And again, we could hook up all values into here to adjust the values of this before it goes into the input here. And likewise, after it goes at the output as well. So you can sort of see how these new inbuilt patch libraries can make a huge difference and make your life a lot easier and we'll go through some of the animation ones and utility ones in other videos um, but I just thought I wanted to quickly show you some of the new changes that have happened to version 78 of Spark AR Studio. I hope you have a very good Christmas and a happy new year and I'll see you again soon. Goodbye.